Hello there again, minions. It's Wheezy. Today we're back in Forza Motorsport to talk about some advanced tuning. If you guys didn't see my previous tuning video, which is basically just about picking parts to upgrade your car with to make it perform better in a race series, go check that out. This is a little bit more advanced. We're gonna get into tweaking some of the settings around the suspension, anti-roll bars, tires, and stuff like that. More advanced ways to dial in the handling of your cars beyond just bolting parts onto them. So this will be the more advanced kind of tuning thing. Um, and to do that, we are going to look here at the Lamborghini Countach. What I did initially is I kind of took this through a race series and kind of started upgrading it and talking through the process of it. I was editing that video and I was like, this is a little too wordy. So what I'm gonna do instead is just jump in this car, stock, I pulled all my upgrades off of it, we're gonna go race it around a track for a little bit to get an idea where it's handling. I'll start adding parts to it, uh, showing you how those will affect the handling of the car and kind of work our way towards uh, a better tune. Uh, first thing that we're gonna do, like I said, I took everything off of it. I think Suzuka is a good overall course to test handling of a car on. So yeah, basically we're gonna do a couple of laps here. I'll kind of talk through what I'm noticing in the handling uh, and we'll do some tuning and some upgrades to it and uh, see how that impacts the handling. To start off with, okay good, we do have access to the upgrade menu in here. So yeah, you can see I've got some car points available for it. I got some parts unlocked. Um, but the first thing that we're gonna do is just jump in it and see how it handles overall. Immediately, it feels like it's understeering a little bit. Understeer being when you're trying to turn into the corner, the car kind of resists turning in, and you usually hear the uh, tires skittering as well because the uh, drive wheels, the front, or not the drive wheels, the front wheels that are doing the steering are losing traction while it's trying to turn. There's an ugly line. Rewind is disabled, really? All right. Because it's the first turn, rewind hasn't kicked in yet. I haven't really used this car on this track. Yeah, you can see when I'm accelerating there, it's kind of taking the turn out of the car. So I'm trying to turn in. When I accelerate, the car kind of straightens out. So these are the kind of things we're looking for for the behavior of the car that we can tweak out of it. And um, the result of understeering or kind of these handling issues, and in Forza, most of the time, honestly, for the majority of cars, you will experience understeer first, even though that doesn't kind of make sense for rear-wheel drive cars. This is a mid-engine rear-wheel drive car, so by typically cars like this will experience oversteer more often. Mid-engine cars are pretty well balanced, but like a uh, but generally speaking, rear-wheel drive cars, whether it be front-engine or mid-engine or rear-engine, like a Porsche. Um, since the drive wheels are at the back, you'll experience oversteer, where the back end is trying to push around, because my batteries are low. Um, on front wheel drive cars, where the drive wheels and the turning wheels are the same, the front wheels, you'll typically experience understeer, because as you're trying to drive and turn, it uses up too much of the tire's traction, and you will understeer. Uh, and all wheel drive cars, where power goes to all four wheels, they also generally um, will experience understeer as well for kind of a similar reason as front-wheel drive cars, although typically to a lesser extent. Um, but generally the idea with tuning, a lot of understeer on that corner, is going to be for us to correct those issues and essentially give cars a neutral balance, a an ability to turn in to corners and point the car where we want it to go more easily. Um, at higher speeds, right? Because when you understeer, the way that you turn into a corner better when the car is understeering is you have to slow down more so the car has more time to rotate into the corner. And so uh, to fix that, when you increase its ability to turn in, you can then travel through those corners faster, uh, increasing your lap time. So. The first thing that we will look at that you will have out of the gate with any car, and in this game, it's usually messed up, although this Lamborghini is uh, an exception, um, is tip is almost always, and even in the Lamborghini, it's not an exception. Like 
The tire pressures will almost always be wrong. I don't know why Forza has done this, but tires are almost always overinflated, and in most cars, the front tires are inflated more than the rear tires, which kind of by definition will induce understeer because the harder tires up front on the steering wheels, since they're harder, they will have less traction, so they will slide more. So in general, whether it be the suspension springs, the tires themselves, softening things increases traction. So if the front tires get softer or the front suspension gets softer, it should allow you to have more traction in the front, so you should be able to turn more easily. In Forza, in general, you kind of want to target about 30 PSI, uh, 30 to 33 PSI for those cars. If you use bar or the non-standard, the non-imperial measurement for pressure, you'll have to do that conversion. But generally 30 PSI, cars usually have the front and the rear tires balanced the same, although Forza almost never has that by default. I don't know if they're trying to force you into the tuning menu by doing this, but it just kind of screws up the handling of most cars by default. You'll you'll wonder why a Ferrari is significantly understeering despite having 500 horsepower and rear wheel drive. Uh, and typically it'll be because the front wheels, uh, the front tires are overinflated. So when you're starting out a series, uh, even if you have no car points for the car, you will have tire pressure available to adjust. So that should be one of the first things that you look at if you're noticing handling issues in your car. Uh, by default, or my experience with pretty much every car I've adjusted this on, setting them both the front and the rear to 30 typically neutralizes the handling and makes the car handle better overall. And dialing in more of the understeer or oversteer is typically better done with things like anti-roll bars and the suspension adjustments instead of the tire pressures. But starting out, this can make a significant difference to the handling of the car. And even in this instance, where you can see that the front tires were actually already inflated less than the rear tires, we may even take another pound out of the front if we're still experiencing understeer. So let's try this now with with the tuning menu like this. And when you're in practice for a series or when you're in a practice or you're in just a time trial like this, any changes you make to the tune of the car will instantly be applied. So now my tire pressures are immediately updated and we can immediately see the handling changes. You can't do this in the race for race series, but in the practice sessions, you absolutely can. So already it feels like the car is turning in better. My controller battery's just done. It already, it warned me it was gonna do that. All right. Yeah, already I can feel that the car's getting uh, better traction. You're hearing probably less squeal through these turns, unless I speed up like that and kind of s cause the entire car to slide. I'm still getting a good amount of understeer here, but definitely not as much as I was. So I'm having to slow down through these turns. And when I accelerate, you can see that the front end kind of straightens out, so it turns in, but then I'm, as, as I'm accelerating, the front end is kind of pushing out. That's something that we can uh, adjust with the suspension or even the differential. That's actually probably mostly a differential adjustment, which we'll get to, but already seeing better handling characteristics out of this. So we'll do a couple more turns and see where we're at. Still understeering a bit, so I'm actually gonna do what I said and pull another PSI out of the front see if that makes the turn in a little bit better. I don't want to make them drastically different. I don't want to be running my front tires at like 20 PSI where they're basically flat like I'm going off-roading or something like that. Still getting some understeer under acceleration, but it's uh, turning in quite a bit nicer just in general. So depending on the car at this point, and as you're going through the race series, you unlock more parts for the car and more car points. One of the first things you'll usually unlock um, is like anti-roll bars. The suspension usually comes later. If you're getting a lot of body roll in a car, like taller cars, you know, SUVs, trucks, but even just taller road cars, will tend to experience more body roll. If you check my, if you did, saw my other tuning video or you didn't, that BMW I tested in that video had a lot of body roll. So just putting anti-roll bars on it uh, made a big difference. But even on a cars like this that have a more sporty suspension out of the gate, uh, you should still experience some uh, improvement from the reduced body roll uh, and the better traction that you get from anti-roll bars. But honestly, with this car and already having things unlocked, I'm not getting a lot of body roll, 
You'll usually kind of feel that as the weight of the car rocking from side to side, especially through like S's like this. You'll feel the car want to lose traction as it's changing direction and the weight shifts from one side to the other. Um, so there may be a little bit of that here, but it's not egregious. What I'm noticing more than anything right now is that understeer when I try to accelerate out of a corner. So the next thing I would probably want to tune is the differential. Although in a race series, you probably wouldn't unlock the differential adjustments uh, as early. But we're going to go ahead and uh, start doing that. But first, I'll actually show you this flow chart that I found online uh, in one of the Forza forums. Um, this actually applies across any kind of simulation racer where you can adjust the suspensions in a relatively realistic way. So this would apply in Gran Turismo as well. Um, but I'll show you here and I'll post it with the uh, post for this video on my website, wheezygaming.com, if you want to download the image directly instead of just pausing it here for the video. But this flowchart will show you generally what the behavior, uh, how to re uh, remedy essentially the behaviors you're seeing in your car. So what I'll do here now is adjust the differential, which I think I have an aftermarket differential on it. I may not. Oh, no, I actually haven't bought one yet. So for the... Okay, so the differential is unlocked. I don't remember if it says on here where it unlocks, but these all unlock relatively early on. So what I would want to do here is adjust the differential. So this controls the difference in how the tires are allowed to rotate, meaning like a solid rear axle, both tires would always spin at the same rate and a differential allows the left and right tires to spin at different rates. Um, so we'll go ahead and put a race differential on this bad boy here. We'll just jump back in and start driving. This is just with it installed stock without any customization to it, and we'll see what this does. I still think I'm detecting a little bit of that understeer under acceleration. Although honestly, I think I feel like I'm feeling less of it already. Still definitely a little bit of it. Uh, in past videos, in my last tuning video for the parts one, I used Laguna Seca just because I was it's one of my favorite tracks and I'm very familiar with it. But as I was thinking about how I was going to do this one, the reason I chose Suzuka is the layout of this track is actually really good for testing out the handling of your car because it's got S's and hairpins and chicanes. It's just a really great course for just really exercising uh, the, the tuning and the handling of a car. And it has some long sections too if you want to test horsepower and speed as well. So so let's jump into the tuning here and let's see if we can get this thing to respond a little bit better under acceleration by adjusting the differential. So increasing the acceleration setting can increase oversteer, which is what we want um, in rear and all-wheel drive cars. Uh, on front differentials, reducing acceleration can reduce understeer. So it would be different on a front-wheel drive car than it is here. So we're actually going to dial it up I'll dry it up quite a bit here and just see what that does. Now, some amount of understeer while accelerating during a turn is expected, um, just because as you're going faster, turning in is always harder for the car to do. Um, but it still feels like we're getting a significant amount here, more than I would expect from a car that kind of has better handling, although this is doing better. I can tell that this adjustment actually did help, but I think there might still be more to gain. You can see as I'm accelerating through this turn, the car is still letting me turn in. What you really want to keep an eye out for is if your car is starting to, you're trying to turn in and the reason it's not turning in is because it's skidding and losing traction, that's when tuning can help you out. If it's if you're not skidding, uh, 
and you're still not able to turn in, that usually just means that you're going too fast for the turn. The tire's gripping, it just can't turn <laughs> enough. Sometimes you can deal with uh, the suspension geometry for that. Getting some understeer there. So getting, generally still getting some understeer in the car. So we still need to work on the car's understeer with the suspension. But I'm definitely getting less understeer from acceleration. Yeah, there's just turn in understeer. Definitely a good amount of understeer. You know what? I think the differential is actually good because when I'm accelerating out of those corners, I'm no longer pushing into understeer even worse. It's actually still turning in. Let's try to do a couple more turns here. So the next thing that we'll probably look at is the anti-roll bars. Yeah, definitely, definitely better with the acceleration there. So we're not understeering nearly as much under acceleration. All right. So the next thing that we would prob that we would want to look at here would be because you unlock it first the anti roll bars. The other thing you could look at would be the suspension. But let's back out and put the suspension upgrade or the anti roll bars uh, on the car and see what that does, and then tweak them as needed. And already I can tell that we've actually reintroduced, I think, a bit of understeer here, which we will talk about because this is where you really do need to tweak anti-roll bars, especially in cars that don't already have a lot of body roll. Anti-roll bars aren't really necessary for maintaining traction, so if you put them on the car, you might need to uh, put more adjustment into them to actually help the performance of the car. So yeah, we've definitely introduced some more understeer back into the car quite a bit in fact and the solution for that like i said earlier um in general with suspension parts whether it be the tires the springs the dampers the anti-roll bars if you want more traction on part of the car so if you want the front to turn in better you want to soften the front if you want the back to grip better under acceleration for instance in a rear wheel drive car you want to soften the back so generally speaking you want to soften the part of the car that you want to respond better. So what we'll do is we'll go in here to the anti-roll bars and we will, yeah, we've got quite a stiff front anti-roll bar here. So we'll pull this down uh, a good amount and this should allow the front to roll a bit more. It'll soften that anti-roll so it'll give the car more of an ability to turn in. So we should pretty quickly see that uh, understeer, reduce. Still a little bit there. Let's see what we can do. Definitely still getting some understeer here. Oh yeah, significant amount of understeer still. Matter of fact, these anti-roll bars from where we were before have actually overall decreased our handling because of the amount of understeer it's reintroduced. So let's definitely soften them up even more. Differential's still doing a good job. 
We're gonna need to soften this some more. Generally speaking, right, the anti-roll bars help counteract the weight transfer from one side of the car to the other, so it should increase overall traction by keeping the car flatter as it moves uh, through the turns, but we're actually gonna soften both uh, front and the rear here, and we're gonna soften the front more than the rear, just so that the relative stiffness gives us more of that point in from the nose. That definitely feels better. Definitely the handling of the car feels a bit more neutral now kind of where I'd expect it to be. So at this point, we might actually just be experiencing, you can hear that slight skitter of the tires. We might just be at the edge of the grip for our actual tires now. Uh, in which case, you know, what we would want to do to get better performance out of the handling is to put better tires on the car for better grip. But overall, the handling feels very neutral now. It feels where I want it to be. The car feels much more pointable than it did stock. Okay, so before we put better tires on this, because I know that's kind of an easy win for some of these things. Uh, what I want to do as well to see if we can, because we're still getting a little bit of understeer and I don't want to go much crazier with the anti-roll bars. Uh, let's go and play with our suspension a little bit. So springs and dampers being adjustable gives you a couple of things that are just good out of the box. The main being that you can uh, adjust your car's ride height, which in general on a track, you want your car's ride height to be as low as possible, but without bottoming out. So on a particularly rough track, you wouldn't want it to be all the way at the bottom, depending on if you go through a turn and you completely lose traction because the bottom of the car hits the road or the curb. Um, but let's just see how just the stock, uh, the stock settings for the race suspension affect what we've already done to the car. Speed through these S's is a, a really good indicator of how well your car is handling. Definitely still getting understeer. So what we're going to do to try and see if we can reduce this understeer is, since we've upgraded the suspension, is we can soften the front suspension to try and again increase our turn in. So let's jump in here to our springs, and what we're going to do is just soften the front springs. You know, a, dec a decent amount so that hopefully we can see a difference in the car. While we're in here, we're going to go ahead and drop our ride height all the way down to the bottom. Now, if we want to use the ride height to adjust um, cornering, we could actually raise the rear a little bit above the front to help increase uh, turn in a little bit. But what we're going to do is just set it to the lowest possible, see if we're going to be bottoming out, and then otherwise just see how this is going to impact the handling of the car. Already, it kind of feels like the car's pointing into turns a little bit better. Let's see. Little understeer there.
Definitely feels a lot better though. There you can see that differential so we can accelerate out of those corners without understeering. Definitely feels like there's still a little bit we might be able to tweak out of this. Definitely feels like I'm carrying more speed through these S's. I'm kind of like in between second and third gear, where before I was very solidly in second gear for the S's. Good indicator that we've gotten some better handling. So let's go ahead and soften these front springs just a little bit more and see if that makes it better. And ideally what we're going for here, right, is that the car does what we want when we tell it to. When we tell it to turn in, it should turn in. If we're not going so fast that physics literally means we can't keep our tires on the road, and we say turn, then the car should turn. To the point where if we do that and accelerate out a little too ruckusly, we'll lose traction and oversteer. That's how you know you're on the right side of it, where the limitation to the car's turn in is your, is your speed, is your throttle. Um, not just the fact that the car won't turn. So still quite a bit of understeer right there. But I probably wouldn't want to soften the front suspension much more. So we might actually get into messing with the camber of the front tires just a little bit as well. Let's see if we can increase that turn. In. I apparently like drifting off there. No, I did not even get that tire off. Don't you dare. <laughs> Overall, the car's definitely handling better. The fact that I'm having to kind of straighten the wheel coming through those turns instead of keeping it hard over to turn is a good indicator that the car's got a, a good turn in and a good balance. Definitely still getting some understeer through these S's, but it feels much faster. Alright. So right here, let's look at... The front alignment. Since we have the race, the race suspension on, it also gives us access to change the damping as well as the alignment. So there are, again, I'll refer back to the flow chart for kind of these more, these are even the more advanced advanced settings for how you want to adjust the way that these respond to like rough curbing or rough roads. But what I'm going to try and do here is adjust the front camber positive a little bit from where it is. Um, because what this does is adjusts how kind of the tires angles are with the road during cornering. And so by moving this camber a little bit more towards the positive, it should allow us to kind of keep a little bit more of that traction uh, as we're turning in. Now with degree changes on the angles of your suspension, whether it be camber or caster and stuff like that, you want to, you don't want to be very dramatic in that you want small changes, just kind of dial things in. So let's see if that made much of a difference, if any here. Definitely can kind of power my way around that hairpin better, which again is just indica indicative that I've got some better performance out of this suspension. 
tracking through this corner really well too. Definitely less understeer in that turn in than we did last last lap. Still some understeer through this corner, but less than we had last lap for sure. It's getting to the part even where uh, now with my suspension where it is on this track to really increase my lap times even more, I would need a little bit more power so that as I'm powering out of some of these corners and down the straights, um, that'll improve my lap times more so than my overall turn in. Definitely feels like it's tracking better through there. I think we can even adjust that camber just a little bit more. Definitely much, much more into third gear in those S's. Still a little understeer on that last part of that turn. Break too much into there. I kind of needed to shift up into third. I'm carrying more speed through these turns than I'm used to now. So it's changing my braking points, ch changing my shifting points. All right, let's adjust that camera just a little bit more because we did see an improvement from that. So let's neutralize it here and see if that gets us even even better turn in here. Carried in tighter than I was expecting there, got way on the curb. Because again, the car is turning in better, so let's see how she turn it through here. Still only need a little lift coming through there, but. But overall, definitely handling more like a sports car, less like the blocky Lamborghini Countach if it actually is. But yeah, very much so handling a lot better to the point where a lot of the mistakes I'm making are because the car is turning in faster than it was on previous laps. And power out of these corners a little bit earlier. But in general, hopefully this has showed you how these settings, beyond just bolting these parts on the car, can also make a dramatic uh, impact on your performance. Completely missed the apex there. So let's start a fresh lap. Hopefully not bollocks it all up now. Hopefully I've got a little better idea of how this car handles and see where we're at.
All right, there we go. 226-1. And a much better handling car overall. So hopefully you guys learned a lot from that. Hopefully that helped you figure out how you're going to use these settings to dial in the handling on your car. Um, one thing I will mention, even though we didn't adjust talk about it here for higher speed tracks like Le Mans and stuff like that you will can start messing with like aero aero is also a similar situation we can get more grip but keep in mind the more downforce you put on with aero the slower your top speed is so you always want to find that balance between the extra downforce you need to get extra traction but you want as little of that as possible to maintain your max speed for whatever track you're on if it doesn't if it's a track without a lot of straights you probably want max downforce if it's a track with a with a lot of big long straights like Le Mans where you need that absolute top speed, you may not want as much downforce. So you'll have to go slower through the turns, but you'd make that up uh, in the straights for high speed. So if you guys enjoyed that video, you guys can leave me a like. If you didn't enjoy it, and I didn't teach you anything that you didn't already know, you can leave me a dislike. If you are new here, subscribe. I do all kinds of video game stuff. Hopefully you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.